All right, hey everybody, welcome to IA Command. Uh, so this video is a, um, this was an attempted live stream uh, from Wednesday night. Unfortunately, I had some technical difficulties. Um, some hardware components failed after I started the stream. And so, you know, I had to take it offline, uh, I had to reboot everything, reboot my computer. Uh, but I did record, I uh, played a game against Kyle Bossom and I did record it, so I wanted to still share it with you guys, but um, I'm going to record over it some commentary uh, the day after because um, we didn't we played over Discord, so I didn't really get a chance to really talk about the game while we were playing, and there's a lot of quiet uh, dead air while we were thinking, so I thought I'd just record over it. <clears throat> um, not sure about the future status of the live stream. Honestly, it's been more difficult than I was anticipating. Um, just seems my hardware has not been keeping up. <sighs> uh, yeah, it's been tricky with, like, I've had a lot of hardware failures in the last few weeks. Um, my microphones stopped working. That was the other thing is uh, there's a static on my, the microphone I usually use had a lot of static recording my voice, so that was not, not pleasant to listen to. So I'm actually using my phone to record this. And I've got a new microphone on the way. Should be getting here this weekend. But anyway, uh, never mind all that. We're just going to talk about this game. Um, I played against Kyle. We are playing on the Trier Stations mission on the ISB headquarters. And I am playing a list that is based around um, recovering and healing damage on IG-11 as the main piece. So my list is IG-11, um, MHD... R2-D2, Jawa Scavenger, Clan of Two on, I, on um, IG, Onar, Jin Urso, and C-3PO. Uh, temporary Alliance bringing in, oh, and Gideon. Uh, I think I forgot to put Gideon out, but he'll be coming out soon. So this list is it's uh, form, normally known as a box, uh, because you box around figures like 3PO and MHD and Onar. Uh, for their defensive recovery bonuses. Uh, Mitch D has a really great card called Miracle Worker, where if a figure within two spaces of him dies, they don't die, basically, and they have two health left. Um, so it's a really strong defensive list that's all about keeping a specific queen piece alive. Uh, usually you see, for like scum version of this list, you usually see IG-88, um, but I downgraded to IG-11 so that I could bring in Jin Urso, since she also has a uh, recovery ability, and also I have recovery from the child. Um, so yeah, and we're playing against Kyle. Um, Kyle tend, usually thrashes me whenever we play, uh, but he's playing, he was nice enough, he was going to play Mandalorian and Boba, but when, he, when I told him I'm playing a box, he uh, changed, he decided to play something else instead, so... He's got um, two groups of Trandoshan Hunters. One is using Lion Ambush, so they'll be deploying in round two. Uh, and he's got Maul, Bosk, R2-D2, Jawa, and 3PO. So pretty cool hunter brawler list with Lion Ambush. Um, and it's a small map. But, um, so yeah, in this game we're playing the uh, tier stations. So it has the three security stations that you can get three points for controlling at the end of each round. And if you control it, you can have them build two damage to a figure in that station's line of sight. So, playing against Kyle, uh, like I said, Kyle tends to thrash me. And we actually played a few weeks ago, I think. It was just on the stream, but unfortunately, my internet just couldn't handle tabletop simulator, simulator and OBS at the same time, so it kind of froze up. But um, Kyle handed, handed a pretty decisive loss to me on that game so uh, and I noticed I felt like I was just distracted and I wasn't really keeping track of like what his cards were doing and what I was doing so this game I'm really trying to stay focused and kind of like not be distracted which was nice that the stream honestly went down because I find that trying to play and stream at the same time is pretty distracting there's just a lot of stuff to hold but with this setup, I'm just recording. I don't have to worry about the chat. So, um, the big thing to note about the Kyle's list is line ambush. That's kind of the thing that tends to catch me off guard. Is uh, round two, I forget that there's figures coming in with line ambush, and I forget when they're going to come in. Uh, 
Um, I've also got a nice plan here. So we're both activating our R2s to draw. I have set it up because IG is seven spaces away from getting to the security station where he can also take a shot at Kyle's terminal. So uh, I positioned him so that with a Gideon movement, he can move five and then rapid fire round one. And the nice thing is um, Kyle's got initiative here, so I will have initiative going into round two, and I also have end of round activation with IG-11. So it's gonna be a really nice initiative swing for me. So Kyle has not been passing so far. He's activated R2. He used three PO to focus Bosk. Bosk is actually pretty scary um, for me because I like to group all my figures together. So uh, if Bosk can get in and do an indiscriminate fire against the box list, that's gonna be a lot of damage. So Gideon focusing IG-11 and pushing him two spaces, and, which does leave the child behind. Um, one of the nice things in this list is there's a combination with Onar, um, because Onar can rush to push a friendly figure even one space, but then he'll be damaged and that figure will be damaged. But because I have um, Jin Urso and the child in my list, those instances of one damage I can just um, heal them off round one. So I think we have Kyle passing. So I activate 3PO here and we're gonna focus up Onar. And I'm gonna, what my plan here for this list is I want to basically build the box near my terminal, have IG-11 kind of extend out away from the box uh, since I have end of round first, or end of round, start of round. And then once IG takes like a hit, I'll have him come back and come back to get healed up. And then Kyle will have hopefully taken a bunch of damage and then will have to come to me where the rest of my figures. So I have Urso and Onar as my um, secondary hitters and they actually hit pretty hard. So here we have Onar activating on my side. Gonna use Rush to push 3PO one more space out. Um, and that way I can kind of plug up that two space area with figures. Not sure if this was good, but I kind of just wanted to do the Rush so, since I knew the damage was gonna come off. And moving him up to be by 3PO. And this way, if I decide to put IG-11, um, what I really want to do is I want to have a spot where IG-11 can be two spaces from Onar, two spaces from MHD. At this point, I have second chance in my hand. I believe I also have Miracle Worker, so. So Jin, Ur Jin Urso, moving up, takes the damage off of Onar that he got from Rush and then gives both of them surge tokens. Um, surge token's really good on Onar. I feel like he really benefits from it. I mean, if he's focused, you probably don't want to spend the surge token, but then once he's unfocused and he's in close, like that surge can mean two, two or one extra damage, usually, most of the time. Okay, so Kyle moving Bosk up, not quite all the way to the door. I think he's giving himself the option to open the door if he needs to. There's, there, you can see my hand now. I've got Perry, Element of Surprise, Second Chance, and Miracle Worker. Um, nice thing about this list is Iron Will is really good in this list because I have IG-11 and Onar are both Guardians. Um, parry is really good. You know, if you can parry from when you already have a block and an evade from 3PO, parry gets really strong. So now we've got Kyle's Trandoshans moving up. So everybody kind of crowding around that door. Making his own box around 3PO. Um, I, I think 
as soon as I pushed IG-11 with Gideon, Kyle knew what was going to happen. So he's trying to set up his figures for when IG-11 comes up and double taps his whoever he's got by the terminal. Yep, so kind of moving everybody up to the door. And I have no interest in opening my door against Kyle's list. It's just like gives him a direct path into my figures with he's got a bunch of close range stuff and i'm also trying to set up so that i'm not super okay so now we've got ig11 activating using rapid fire so i guess to attack twice he's focused and we're attacking a trandoshan i thought about going for boss but i really just want to thin out Kyle's numbers, especially before the second group of Trandoshans comes down, and I thought that um, this would be a kill, because I am going to be controlling the security station also, so even if I don't kill this Trandoshan, oh shoot, you know what, I messed up here then, I did 6 damage, I should have just shot at boss, since the security station would have killed the Trandoshan, so there's your... First misplay from me. So, finishing off the Trandoshan gets four points. And then, of course, um, I can't just use the security station to deal two damage. Oh, now we're activating the child. So, for those that don't know, um, child activates at the starter end of. Uh, its parent figure's activation, and then it can spend an action to recover one damage and remove a harmful condition from an adjacent friendly figure. Um, so it's really nice in this kind of list as another source of recovery. So that's the end of the round, so I get another three points from controlling the security station. Um, if I So Boss has regenerate, so at the end of the round he will recover two damage and discard all harmful conditions. So that would happen after the security station deals damage, so pointless to do it to boss here, so I just put her on 3PO instead. And now as long as Kyle doesn't have um, take initiative, I will be able to activate again. So I've drawn, I drew IG-11's card, which is guild programming. And then start of the round, I'm playing second chance on IG, uh, since it's really the only figure that Kyle can go for, uh, and I'm expecting he'll want to shoot at IG. So the interesting thing is, I could go ahead and activate IG here, but I've got so much support. I've got second chance. He's going to be able to move back and get healed by, um, you know, Baby Yoda and MHD and Urso. So I don't feel especially compelled to activate him right away. I actually want to go f and try to get more command cards. Um, I don't need to focus him because I've got guild programming. So I go ahead and activate R2 and draw. And then I'm moving R2 out of the way so that Gideon can get up and focus uh, Jin Erso. She's the next one that needs to be focused here. So I drew a uh, brace for impact. And the other card on my right is um, Brace Yourself, which is it adds plus two blocks while you're defending if it's not the attacker's activation. So stuff like Han, End of Round Shot, Greedo, Parting Shot, it works against stuff like that. But honestly, against Kyle's list, it's not super great. Um, he doesn't really have any out of activation attacks. So I think that card ends up being dead. Not sure if I should replace it. Maybe if I should have Celebration. Um, so activating Gideon. I think Kyle... So Kyle activated his R2 to draw. So Kyle also not feeling a super rush because he knows as soon as he goes for IG, I'm just going to activate IG, sh sh double tap, and pull back. Um... So Gideon moved up and focused Chin or so. And now I've got Boss activating. So Kyle's gonna go ahead and take a shot here at IG. And since IG's not is all by himself, indiscriminate fire is not gonna do much. 
plays wild attack so that's going to be a big attack i play brace for impact here that i drew off of r2 it's going to be two black die against two red and two green die with plus two damage which is still going to hurt yep so you can see the roll there 10 damage pips and a surge for pierce two against Oh, no more surge because of the white die from wild attack. So that's five blocks, so five damage. Still a very respectable attack from Bosk. So five damage turns into eight damage from heightened reflexes. Very good attack. That's what is that? That's three fourths of IG11's health. He's got 12 health. So now, of course, I need to activate IG. The problem is that I know that the Trandoshans are coming, so I can't just rely on second chance against the rest of Kyle's terminal sitters. I need second chance when the Trandoshans come into my deployment zone. So activate Baby Yoda first to heal one damage. And I'm gonna double tap the other Trandoshan. And again, I just really wanna kill figures, so I don't wanna start pouring attacks into Bosk and have it not affect the board. So I wanna go for these. These Trandoshans hit really hard. So that's why I'm going for them first. Just if I can clear out some of those damage dealers, I feel like it'll help me a lot. So playing guild programming with rapid fire means both of my attacks will be focused. And I do have a reroll because of targeting computer that's built in with IG-11. And I think that was like six, seven damage. So this was tough, yeah, I think I did seven. I left him on one health. Um, but again, I didn't want to just shoot at Bosk. So feels bad, you have to spend a focused attack on a one health figure, but removing figures is important. So that takes me to 11 victory points, and now I get to a five. So I wasn't quite sure where I wanted to put him. Um, if I put him right by 3PO and the Jawa, then Maul could come down and do a lot of damage. But if I put him like on the right of R2D2, then the the Trandoshans are coming in this chart this right now, and I need him to be within two spaces of MHD. So Taking into account what's going to happen with Lion Ambush. Um, and I'm really glad. So again, I'm trying to really focus on remembering what's going to happen. I feel like Lion Ambush is always so tricky. But it's when it's after the opponent has activated. And then it counts how many activated or defeated groups the Lion Ambush player has. I think I put him there. So here I have Get Down from Honor, I have Miracle Worker from MHD, and I have Distracting from 3PO to protect IG-11. And really that's the main purpose of this list, is just keep IG-11 alive as long as possible. Alright, so Lion Ambush triggers, Trandoshans are coming in from my deployment zone. First one's going after 3PO. Roll a blank, re-roll into, not gonna survive that. So I took a damage from the Relentless, although now I'm kind of wishing I had not because I could have used Get Down to survive that with one health left. Um, decide not to use Miracle Worker there, it's just 
three feels not as important as keeping my other figures alive. So now we're taking a card, so I lose positioning advantage. Um, Trandoshan is attacking IG-11. So I've got parry in hand, I've got get down. The, um, the bleed's not such a big deal, but I still want to have to deal with it. I'm really wanting to stop the pierce too. So by getting using get down to add an evade and then parry to add another evade, I'm able to stop the pierce two and the plus one damage. And I only take one damage here. But Kyle's got looking for a fight, which is going to let him use Parting Blow, which is the combo. So I think here, this is going to trigger the second chance. So when before IG would be defeated. He is not, and instead you discard second chance, and they recover two damage. So the interesting thing here is I could use Miracle Worker here because he's going to push me away from MHD. Um, I could use Miracle Worker instead, and then keep second chance on IG. I would have done that if MHD had already activated, but I decided to just let the the um, second chance go off, and then move MHD up to heal IG11. So, so far we've got like five cards, five command cards, and four attacks put into IG-11, and he's still not dead. So MHD activating to heal three damage. And now again, he's within, he's close enough to use Miracle Worker. So Kyle activates 3PO and focuses up Maul. And I find that, I thought that was an interesting placement for 3PO, just because if I take that security station, um, if 3PO is out of cover, he's gonna die at the security station. But I think Kyle realizes that. So now I need to clear out these trend oceans before the rest of Kyle's force can get down here. And I still have Jin Urso and I still have Onar and they are focused and tokened up. I decided to try and just kill Creepo with an attack. So he's only got Maul and the Jawa left. And I still have all my heavy hitters. Well, two out of my three heavy hitters left. Oops. Yeah, so kind of whiffed on that attack. Unfortunately. decided to use Bargain here, since I'm already so far ahead I might as well press my luck. Spend 1 VP and then you gain 1 VP for each damage, so lost 0. And now he activates the Jawa, opens the door and then moves to block line of sight to 3PO. So now we have a direct threat from Maul. And I'm sure that he's got some kind of movement card, so I'm trying to figure out what to do here. Since I still have Onar and Jin are still left to go, uh, I'm thinking, well, I could try and kill Maul. Maul's just such a huge source of damage. Uh, there's probably, I feel like maybe that's what I should have done. 
but I think I decided to just go for these Trandoshans since they're already here. Um, unfortunately, Jin is in a tough spot where she can't use the two movement from Tonfa to get to the Trandoshan. So I have to just spend movement points and then waste the two movement from the Tonfa strike. And so, for those who don't know, Jin Urso, she can. Um, she has an ability that's an action, move two spaces, then you get to perform a melee attack with a red and a green die. Uh, and then she gets to perform her normal ranged attack. So I, I decided to wait on Truscos both ways so I could recover damage from IG. So I've only got one surge token here. So I decided to not spend it on the first attack since I'm focused. She gets an automatic pierce one, but it doesn't matter here. So that's five damage, or six damage. No, five damage. And then doing the regular attack to finish off the trend ocean here. And I spend the token, so you get plus one damage from the surge, and then pierce one gives me exactly enough damage to kill it. So. See, Jin definitely hits hard if you give her the resources to do so. Um, she's all about managing resources, and she's really good at um, actually attacking these like black die figures, just regular black die. She doesn't like attacking really defensive figures so much, but just like a regular black die, she's great. So using trust, both, trust goes both ways. Recovers one damage off of IG and gives both of them a surge token. And now we've got Maul coming in. So this is actually, I didn't realize this is not correct. Um, he uses face to face, but then he shouldn't have been able to double tap because Maul's double tap ability costs an action. So I missed that. I thought he was using Urgency, I think he played that first, and I think that's what he should have played. But that's alright. So I also misplay here. So luckily no surges, so no pierce, so just one damage. And he already used the reroll, so this one's not going to be that great. Unfortunately, I used get down. So one damage short again. So I lucked out. I still have Miracle Worker though. So he actually decides not to pierce. He's going to use it for stock prey, which gives him two movement points and a power token. So you can get back to 3PO, which makes sense. So I think I should have been at six there. I messed up, so I should be at eight, but that's all. That's all right. So I get last activation with Onar here, and I really need to get rid of Maul. He's just doing way too much damage. But he is a paper tiger, so you just kind of have to kill him. So, Honor using Rush for that free extra damage. Which gets him away from 3PO, so no distracting. Um, I attack. I wasn't sure if I would, should spend the token, but... Um, it ended up mattering, but because because it didn't spend it, I decided you know it's not fair to try and do it after the fact. So um, so yeah, unfortunately we lose out on a damage there by not spending the surge token, but it's good to save it for when he's not focused anyway. So 
still dealing a healthy seven damage, leaving Maul with four health. Unfortunately, that means he is gonna be alive at the start of the next round, so I won't be able to kill him before he activates. And Kyle's gonna be getting initiative uh, going into the next round. So, end of round, Jawa, my Jawa has the security station, so I get another three points, which puts me at 18 and deals two damage to Kyle's Jawa. Alright, so initiative to Kyle, gonna activate Maul, and this is where I misplayed. So first of all, I should have four health, and what I should have done is use the child, I should have incapacitated the child to take away his red die, and then he would have only done one damage. And now I am unfortunately in the scenario where I have Miracle Worker, but Miracle Worker will leave me at 2 health, and then Maul will just attack someone else with Cleave 2 to finish IG off. So I decide it's not worth it to waste Miracle Worker here. I was really agonizing though, and afterwards I was really frustrated that I forgot to uh, incapacitate the child to use Clan of Two's ability, or to use the child's ability. So, yeah, I let him die. I use self-destruct, which is when he dies, um, you get to move three and then roll a red die, and then each adjacent figure suffers that much damage. Which I think helps here because it lets me kill Maul with, like, a dinky attack rather than having to commit a full attack to finishing him off. So, that was good. Puts Kyle on the board with 11... I should have gotten 10 points for that. He gets 9 from IG and then 1 more from Clan of 2. So there's a focus attack going at Miracle at um, MHD, so now of course I have to play Miracle Worker. If I don't, then I won't be able to play it for the rest of the game. So. Miracle Worker stops that attack. Yeah, now I remember, I just remembered that I didn't use the ability. But, the nice thing, so another cool thing about Clan of Two with a box list like this is because you're gonna have your Baby Yoda hanging out with a bunch of your figures, um, once your carrier dies, it's very easy for you to pick up Baby Yoda. So, so activating MHD, I'm gonna take a shot at Maul. He rolls pretty badly here. So Kyle, for some reason our vassal started desyncing at this point, but Kyle rolled uh, just a single evade. So luckily that meant two damage to kill him. Pretty low chance to kill him, but the uh, nice thing is that the explosion from IG-11 was what allowed that to happen. And then the other part of Plan of Two is that when the figure that with Clan of Two, while it's defeated, other unique figures can spend an action to pick it up, to pick up the child and gain a victory point. So MHD attacks with the first action, second action picks up the child that was left behind and gets back the victory point I lost from taking that um, attachment. Very points efficient. down to Bosk and a Trent Ocean and a Jawa. So Trent Ocean is declaring an attack on Jin. Um, Relentless deals a strain, so I discard repair. So glad to see that's gone since IG-11 is dead. And now I've got a big attack coming in at Jin Urso. I think at this point, yeah, we've desynced, so unfortunately the dice are not showing. Um, but Kyle tells me he's got two damage showing and a surge, so four damage and a surge. So that's going to do three damage to Jin or so. So 
at this point, I think we have to um, resync. So let's talk about <clears throat> where we're at in the game here. So um, I have, so IG-11 is dead. I have Gideon, Jawa, R2 left. He still has Bosk, R2, and 3PO. So we're likely going to be seeing a focused Bosk here. Um, MHD is going to die just because... Indiscriminate fire usually does two damage, especially if they're focused. So I'm looking at trying to maybe split up my group here, just because I know MHD or boss is gonna come down and do a ton of damage. Um, interestingly, he would do damage to his own Trandoshan, but uh, my figures are starting to pick up a lot of incidental damage. And I could see myself losing here if, like, a bunch of my figures just start dying all at the same time. So, um, the other thing is I'm trying to maybe get 3PO dead. I'm looking at the points here. So I need 14 more points to get to 40. And if we're looking at the points that we can pick up, there's three stations, so that's nine. And then I would need um, five more. And there's no five point figures, so I so going for the security stations doesn't make a ton of sense here, except for just the one, you know, the one that's closest to me. Um, so yeah, we're uh, resetting. I'm trying to figure out who's not synced. Um, sometimes Vassal does that and you just have to either um, you can right click the person's name and synchronize or you just have to like save the game, disconnect, restart, and then come back. So, um, yeah, it's hard without the map. <laughs> so talking about the list, um, some of the neat things that didn't get to get played um, from this list was repair, which is two points. Any figure can use it, it's a special action, and you recover three on an adjacent droid. So really good, I've seen Derek use it with um, IG-88, and works just as well with um, IG-11. And then I also, you, you can actually run two copies of that card, but instead I choose to run, um, it's I can't remember what it's called, but it's a, it's a two point card action. Uh, any figure and it recovers two damage on any figure, but if the figure using it is a leader or a guardian Then it recovers three damage instead. So that one's really nice because you know, Onar can use it um, Gideon can use it, Jin Erso can use it. She's a leader. So she gets the full value but even if you Even if you're down to like uh, Oh, Jawa's a, Jawa's a leader? I think I always think Jawa's a leader yeah, Jawa's a leader, so Jawa can use it, um, but any figure can use it, which is nice. So like, you know, R2-D2 could use it on Onar, whereas Repair, you can only use it on IG-11, really. Alright, so back to the objectives. Um, yeah, so going for the security stations doesn't really matter. So at this point, I've got 14 points left to get. So killing Bosk is kind of my main win condition. <clears throat> so, and then looking at Kyle's win conditions here, I mean, he's, he's gonna have to kill probably I mean, you gotta kill MHD, and then probably gonna have to definitely kill um, Jin or so and Onar. And I mean, that would give him, what was that, 18 points? Put him at 29. <clears throat> and if he gets like two security stations and kills like the Jawa and 3PO. So now we've got Jin or so attacking. So four damage, two surge tokens from Trust Goes Both Ways. It's gonna leave the Trandoshan on one health. So that was seven damage unfocused with two surge tokens. Not bad. And then plays planning. 
and I draw iron will and negation here. And we've got the jaw wall activating, playing planning. And I think he's gonna take a shot here. So this is Kyle's Jawa. So I was able to use Taunt for Strike to move two spaces to get to the terminal. And then um, because that was just one action, I got to use planning in there. So Jawa, Kyle's Jawa, taking a shot at my Jawa at range five. And then Jawa can add a block by reducing the total evades by one. So that's plus one block essentially. So search for plus two, that's going to do two damage. Oh no, three damage. Leaves my Jawa at two health left. <clears throat> so I still have Onar here. I'm going to go with the Jawa before it goes down. So I move one and I'm going to try and take out um, Kyle's Jawa. Although it's a bit of a long shot. Although Kyle's Jawa is able to do three damage to me, uh, to my Jawa, he's got distracting. So. That's a funny. I roll amazingly well with this Jawa. And that lets me do three damage to finish it off. Even if he used um, Take Cover, the uh, Jawa has pierced too, so it would have gotten pierced away. Alright, Kyle's 3PO focusing Bosk. So how many points does that put me at? That's So I've got 12 plus 10, 22 plus 6, so I'm at 28. So if I kill Bosk, I'll be at 36. And then if I kill the Trandoshan, I'll be at 40. So yeah, gotta kill Boss, gotta kill the Trandoshan. So Gideon takes out the Trandoshan for one more damage and focuses Jin Urso. Kyle activating R2 to draw a card. gonna have to take out Bosk here. And Bosk is probably gonna have to take out Onar. So yeah, Kyle's in a tough spot here because he's only got Bosk. So stalling out here a little bit, I want him to activate Bosk before I activate Onar. So double moving R2 to get to the security station. Um, I was hoping this way I'd have some redundancy on who was on the station, but unfortunately my Jawa only has two health left. So yeah, um, and that's interesting too, if Kyle could kill MHD, he could potentially pick up the child, but I think that would actually just give me another chance to pick it up. So Boss plays Urgency, I play Negation. Since uh, I believe Take was played... Oh no, he hasn't played Take yet, but yeah. Generally when someone plays Urgency, I play Negation. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea. Uh, Focus Boss is gonna go for R2 here. And that's gonna do it. And then Indiscriminate Fire takes out the Jawa as well. So a nice double kill by Bosk. Get some six points. But I think that Urgency was supposed to get him to the security station, but Opportunistic allows him to do that as well. So a lot of redundancy in Kyle's deck. A lot of movement points since he's playing a brawler list and he needs to get close. So I like that he's got all these movement cards. He's got urgency, opportunistic, looking for a fight, face to face. Face to face doesn't work with Maul, but it does work with Trandoshans. So 
And honestly, it can work pretty well with any of them. So now activating them all. I use Rush, and Kyle placed him right on the security station, so I can't pull him off of it. So I decided to just kind of push him away from the rest of my figures. And now spending the search token from, what, I think that was round one, I got that from Jyn Erso. Unfortunately, it doesn't matter because there's an evade. So, Bosk takes five from the attack, one from Rush. Bosk has 11 health now, uh, but he's got regenerate, so. Bosk is just gonna regenerate that damage off. <clears throat> Draw my last card, which is Stealth Tactics, which should actually be Generous's card. I forgot to update my list in Tabletop Admiral. But I think Built on Hope is just so good, and you should, it's just definitely worth it to run it over Stealth Tactics in this list. But it would have been a dead card <laughs> if I had been on the bottom, so... Alright, so now Kyle... So now I get initiative. Kyle's gonna play Take Initiative, exhausting 3PO. And he's gonna uh, activate Bosk. Attacking Onar with indiscriminate fire. And let's see, he's, he's paused, he's waiting to see who he's gonna attack. So he's gonna move back first. And that makes sense because. So, yeah, he's gonna attack Onar. And Onar plays Iron Will. Iron Will, so good with Onar. Probably the best figure to use Iron Will since he doesn't get any defenses. So all of this damage, he would have taken like six damage. So stops three damage, but it doesn't stop two damage from going on to MHD because of indiscriminate fire. So all in all, Iron Will stopped three damage. It would have been nice if Bosk had been focused and played tools and all that stuff. Then it would have stopped a ton of damage, but it stopped three damage for a three point card. Now we just have to take out Bosk here. So, Jin or so. Gonna use Trust Skills both ways at the start of the activation so that she has that surge token she needs for the second attack. I find when you're using Urso, you wanna either be focused and have a surge token or have two surge tokens. Um, she does need those surge tokens to deal good damage since she's only got two attack dice, but. I feel like we balanced her attack really well with those surge tokens. And that's gonna do five damage, so you just need two more. And again, that pierce one is really good when you're multiplying it over two attacks. So, yep, that's going to do the last damage and put me over 40. So that was the game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. hope you enjoyed seeing this um, some of these Season 4 figures. IG-11, Jin Erso, Bosk, Trandoshans. We actually got quite a lot. Um, Clan of Two. Uh, we got to see more recovery-focused lists in action against like a brawler list that we've seen. And... Um, some, quite a few misplays on both sides, uh, forgetting to use Clan of Two, uh, there was one early on in the game that I forgot to use, and then um, Kyle using face-to-face, -face, but make sure you check out uh, Isaac's stream tomorrow, Fridays at 9am Pacific and 5pm British Summertime. See you later!